Oh hey, this is Joe Van Cleve. Good morning. I want to talk to you a little bit more today about the um, this device that I invented called the Light Pipe Array that I'm currently in the process of building and almost completing. So let me reach off camera and get it. This um, odd looking wooden thing with all these black tubes uh, mounted in it is what I call a Light Pipe Array and what it's intended to do is to create a pixelated image against black and white photo paper or a video image using strictly this array of uh, nested thin plastic tubes which mysteriously kind of forms an image all by itself without using a pinhole or another kind of a lens at all. And it, the way it does it is each tube has a narrow angle of view and the light coming through each tube gets averaged into an average spot of light back at the film plane. And because the angle of view of this array is about 30 degrees, um, it'll have some particular uh, angle that it takes up. And uh, the light from all these different parts of the scene come together in their respective little spots to create an image. This wooden framework is made of half inch and five eighths inch uh, wood bought at the hardware store. It kind of holds um, the tube array in place. The array of tubes is held in place really by a black plastic craft mesh on the back and a cardboard mesh on the front. The black mesh on the back is purchased from a craft store and it's the kind of mesh used for uh, sewing arts, sewing crafts, you know. Um, the holes in the mesh are about the same size as the coffee stir sticks, about an eighth of an inch. You have to drill out the holes a little bit using an eighth inch drill bit. And it's particularly in the corners near the edges where the tubes are not perpendicular to the mesh you want to drill the hole at an angle in order to make them big enough so the um, tubes can go through without badly warping the mesh. So the mesh back here holds the back of the tubes all together very close together in, at, at the film plane while on the front because the angle of view the holes in the front mesh have to be wider apart than the the ones in the back and I couldn't find a commercially made mesh the, of the right pitch to do this, so I had to make my own. This is made from thin cardboard and I'm using an eighth inch hole puncher, a hand operated hole puncher that only has about a seven eighths inch reach. So which means that this cardboard mesh had to be cut into strips about an inch and a half or so wide so I could reach and reach in and punch all the holes. I drew this grid over the entire piece of cardboard then I cut the cardboard into strips and I punched all the holes by hand. Then when I reassembled the cardboard, because they were all, it was all flimsy, what I had to do is there is a wooden frame behind uh, the cardboard that holds, um, that braces all of the, uh, all the strips together. And it's made out of thin strips of uh, basswood like maybe three sixteenths wide by a sixteenth of an inch thick. So it's a grid of this stuff in the back. The tubes angle outwards uh, toward the sides and corners. The strips of wood behind the cardboard, when out toward the edges, they have to be angled also to match that. So you can get the tubes up through them. So that's basically it. You have a big frame holding a front mesh and a rear mesh together and those two grids is what holds all the tubes in. When I get this done, I'm going to cover the sides, top and bottom of the, of the array with a light proof material like maybe black foam core board. Um, the film plane at the back, this frame right here, is going to get covered with a shallow light tight lid that will remove You'll have a sheet of photo paper in here with some backing cardboard to keep the paper pressed up against the, the tubes and you'll have the lid to secure it with. The front of the array, there's going to be a, a shallow lid that fits over the entire front. It'll pull off and operate like a shutter. 
The second operating mode of the array will be, instead of being for still photography, it'll be for live video. And the way that'll work is I'll have a ground glass view screen, probably made out of acrylic plastic, one side sanded down into a, a view screen. Placed in here, I have a pyramid-shaped black foam core light baffle. I have a base plate and a tripod mount that locates a video camera centered onto the screen. And using all this together, even in bright light, I'll be able to shoot live video of the scene projected onto the ground glass view screen from the light pipe array, and I'll be able to do live video of that. So those are the two different operating modes. Well now, let's go look at how I actually uh, piece together the array. Well, first of all, I have this 1 8 inch drill bit. What I do is I drill out the square holes at an angle approximating the angle that the tubes are going to be mounted at. So you notice in the corners, the tubes are not perpendicular to the mesh. They come out at an angle. And so what I do is I'm going to actually hand drill these holes so that it's going to be easier for the tubes to go through the mesh. And so you notice the angle of the drill bit, I'm angling it up to the upper right corner. So I'm going to do that for the entire row. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I have this small brass tube, and I'm going to reach across the camera, grab from my supply of coffee stir sticks. What I do is I put the brass tube inside the coffee stir stick, and the brass tube keeps the stir stick from uh, buckling due to the, the force of pushing it in. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the brass tube through the hole in the mesh, and I'm going to insert it at a perpendicular angle to the surface, first of all. So this is at perpendicular to the surface. I'm going to have my finger behind the mesh to brace it, and I'm going to force it in just so that the tube, the, the plastic stir stick, goes through the mesh. Having done that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the, uh, the brass tube so it goes into the front hole of the mesh at the hole that I want it to be at. And I'm going to turn it around, hopefully you can see that it's coming out of the right place in the mesh right here. So that rod, that brass rod, acts like a guide rod. Now with a guide rod installed, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to have my finger behind the mesh, I'm going to slowly push the straw in until the straw touches the back side of the front cardboard mesh. Then I'm going to start twisting the drinking straw and work it through the hole here so the drinking straw goes through the cardboard. After I do that, I, re I push the brass tube up so it's even with the um, coffee stir stick and then the neat thing is I have this fixture here. This is a larger brass tube with an even larger one that fits snugly over it and it has this 90 degree square stock of brass solder to it. This is a depth gauge that sets the depth of the rear of the tubes and the way this works is it runs the brass is tube is set against the wooden frame and this protrusion of brass is pushed up against the drinking straw and I push it in until the tube stops and that sets the depth of this drinking straw so they're all the same. So after having done that I remove my guide rod and now I can continue with the next hole and that's basically how I installed all of these. Um, the total number of tubes in this array it's 65 by 52. That's when it's finished and that'll be 3,380 uh, tubes. I started in the middle and I worked my way outwards. When I got out to a certain point I discovered that the mesh was starting to warp in the corners because the tubes are trying to go through those square holes at an angle and it's trying to warp the flexible plastic. And so what I did is I went ahead and finished the corners first 
and I, I pre-drilled the holes at an angle with this drill bit and after having completed those corners now I can go back and I can just do the side parts to finish it up. That's basically how I'm doing this assembly method. I'm using a guide rod and I'm using this fixture with a depth gauge that I can slide this up along and I can get the, the, uh, the back of the tubes all in the same plane. There's another tube I didn't show you which is another brass tube that fits over the guide rod snugly and it's the same size as the um, stir sticks and I can use it to push the stir sticks back if they go out too far. So it's just these little brass parts that I'm using. The other thing that's actually handy is a rat tail file that's an eighth of an inch size. Sometimes the little wooden bracing pieces behind the cardboard mesh aren't perfectly lined up and you have to file them to make room for the tube to come through. Well that's it. That is the uh, how I put together the light pipe array mesh. Well I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, that the light pipe array project is interesting to you and uh, when I get it completed I will post uh, more videos and maybe start doing some serious work with it. In the meantime uh, I hope you found this interesting and we'll see you later. Have a good day. Bye.